So for number eight, um, we are deciding which of the following are true. And to decide that, we must consider the universe. So for A, we're saying for all x belonging to the reals, um, x plus x is bigger than x. And now that is certainly true, um, is bigger, bigger than or equal to. That is certainly true um, if x is uh, non-negative, right? But if we choose for x is equal to, say, x is equal to negative 2, then what we're going to have here is that negative 2 minus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2, um, which we have negative 4 is greater than or equal to negative 2, and this is clearly false. Oops. This is clearly false, right? Um, so because we have a universal, it's just enough to prove a single counterexample, and x is equal to negative 2 is a counterexample, so we are going to say that this one is false. Okay, what about b? Um, x plus x is greater than or equal to x for the natural numbers. So now we're not considering any negatives, right? We're considering the numbers from 1, 2, 3, and so on. So clearly, um, 2x is bigger than or equal to x for every positive number, right? So this is clearly true. Uh, this is clearly true. Um, what about c? For C, we have there exists an X such that 2X plus 3 is equal to 6X plus 7 in the natural numbers. So let's work this out. We have that um, 2X plus 3 is equal to 6X plus 7. We'll bring the 7 to the other side and the 2. We'll bring the 7 to the left and the 2 to the right. So we have 3 minus 7 is equal to 6X minus 2X. Therefore, we have... Um, and so we do have that minus 4 is equal to 4x, and therefore x is equal to negative 1. Now, negative 1 is not in the universe, right? Um, it's not a natural number, so there's no number in the natural numbers that could satisfy this equation. Therefore, this is false. Um, D. There exists an x such that 3 to the power of x is equal to x squared. Now, solving this algebraically will be pretty difficult. So let's just draw the general graph and think about how this looks like. Um, so we know that 3 to the power of x uh, is an exponential curve that goes something like this. Oops. It goes something like this, right? And it's never negative. And we know that the curve... Um, x squared, it goes, it goes something like so. So we don't know if the, if the right-hand side is going to intersect with the black curve, but we for sure know that the left-hand side will, right? Because it has, it goes from zero all the way up. Um, and the black curve is going in the opposite direction. So we know that for sure, on the left-hand side, these are going to have to cross their path somewhere. So... Um, in the real numbers, there is definitely a solution. So that is true. What about 3 to the power of x is equal to x? So now um, we are going to have a curve that looks something like, or a line rather, that looks something like this. And we can see that it'll, it'll never, they'll never touch, right? Because on the left-hand side, um, the... The blue curve is negative, and it will never touch the black one, which is always positive. And on the right-hand side, um, the the y-intercept of the blue is at 0, the y-intercept of the black one is at 1, and then the black one just grows way faster because it's exponential, so they'll never touch. Um, and so this one's false because they will we'll never have a solution to that intersection. Um, okay, let's do now with item... F. So we're saying there exists in the universe of the reals, um, there exists, let's distribute this out. So we have 6 uh, minus 3x is equal to 5 plus 8 minus 8x. So we're saying that there exists an x that satisfies this equation. So let's bring over the variables to the left and the numbers to the right. So we have 8x minus 3x is equal to, um, this is 5 plus 8 uh, minus 6. So then we have 5x is equal to 
this is plus 7. Um, 7 and this x is equal to 7 fifths. Um, 7 fifths is in the universe of real numbers, right? So we have just produced a solution. We have just shown that at least one solution exists. Um, now let's do g. So g we're saying that for all x, um, for all x, any x that we can plug in in this equation in the universe of real numbers, they'll be bigger than zero, right? Um, so the way that I like to think of, of it is, let's see if we can find the roots. So we're going to take x squared, uh, we're going to take x squared plus 6x plus 5, and then we're just going to set it equal to 0, right? So let's factor it, um, so we can factor this into x plus 5 times x plus 1, and therefore x is equal to negative 5 and negative 1. So let's do the sign test. Um, so we have negative 5 and negative 1. So if we plug in a number bigger than negative 1, like maybe 10, it'll give you a positive number. If you plug in a number less than minus 5, so maybe negative 10, it will also give you a positive number. But if you plug in a number between negative 5 and negative 1, so like maybe negative 2, you will get a negative number, right? Because negative 2, this gives you 4. Um, 4 minus 12 plus 5, that gives you negative 3, so negative. So we can see that anything between the intervals um, negative 5 to negative 1, all of this will be less than 0. So it is false. Uh, this is false because this is the universal, it's saying for all, right? Um, now let's do h. So h we have x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now we can't factor this. So maybe for this one, we have x squared plus 4x plus 5. So let's try and do the, the quadratic, right? And if we do the quadratic, when we look at our discriminant, so when we look at the square root of b squared minus 4ac, this is going to give us the square root of b is 4. So 16 minus 4 times 4 times 1 times 5, right? So actually over here, we're going to get the square root of negative 4. So this is not possible, um, not in the universe of real numbers. I mean, we could certainly find solutions um, in the complex numbers, but because it's real, um, this is also false, never satisfies. So let me just put it in here. This is also false. Um, Actually, that, sorry, that is true, because what it means that is, um, since we can't find this, it means that it will never cross over the x-axis, right? It'll have, uh, it'll have no roots. It'll go something like this. We'll never have any roots. So it means it will never be negative. So that is actually true. Um, now let's do E. There exists a number such that if we plug it into this equation, um, x squared minus x plus 41, it is prime in the universe of natural numbers. So if you plug in 1, right, so we have 1 squared minus 1 plus 41, this is equal to just 41. 41 is prime, so that is true. Now, for J, we have the universal, so we're saying for every possible um, natural number that you could plug in, this has to be true. And if we plug in the number 41, we are going to have here 41 squared minus um, 41 plus 41, which is equal to 41 squared. Now, 41 squared is obviously not prime because it's equal to 41 times 41. So we've just produced an example where it doesn't work. So this is false because not true for all of them. Um, what about K? K, we're saying that for all of X, this, this equation X cubed plus 17X squared plus 6X plus 100 is bigger than zero. And that's not true because the biggest power uh, is a cube, right? So for example, I could put minus 1,000, um, minus eight, no, I'll, I'll put it even more to make it you know, more, more scandalous, if you will. I'll make it minus a million. Well, minus a million cubed will always be bigger um, or rather more negative than anything like plus 17x squared, plus 6x, plus 100. It'll always, the minus will always win, right? You'll never get something bigger to make it positive, to make the whole sum positive. So we can clearly see that there are cases here where uh, this will be negative, right? When x gets very large. So 
this is false. Even though we don't know where exactly um, it gets very large, we, we obviously know that this is false. And now for L, we're saying that for every x and for every y in the universe of rational numbers, if x is less than y, so if y is a bigger number, then there exists um, a w that's in the middle of them, right? And this is true because the, the, um, the rational numbers exist on a continuum. So you could, for example, between one-third and one-fourth, there are infinite um, rational numbers between them. You could always break it down to 1 over, you know, 3.1, 1 over 3.2, and etc. So in the rational numbers, you can always find a number between two numbers. If that were not the case, it would imply that the rational numbers are discrete, like the natural numbers, and that's, um, that's not true. So this one here is is false. Um, oh, I, true. I mean, the. So yeah, this is true. So for any, if one number is greater than another number, they're both rational, you can always find a rational between them. So that is it.